Money in Excel, Connect Financial Institution. Get ready because it's time to excel in money with Money in Excel. Here we are in our Money in Excel worksheet. In a prior presentation, we set up the Money in Excel worksheet by basically setting up a new QuickBooks file and then going over to the File tab in, in the New area. And then we look for Money in Excel template, which may be up in the New area up top or down below. You might have to search for it. It would be applicable or you can only use the Money in Excel template if you have basically a 365 type of subscription type model for the Microsoft Excel. Now that we have this set up, we then added or accepted the application for it. On the right-hand side, we have the Money in Excel open here. You can see the, the icon in the upper right, which is in the Home tab in Excel. And that'll give us basically a pivot table type of format. On the right-hand side, we then had to add or accept the application that would be used to run the program. And then uh, select or give the information for our Microsoft Office account so that we can then use this, this feature of this application. Now we're ready to basically connect our banking information. And so note down below, you got the welcome, you got the instructions, you got the snapshot. We're kind of focusing in here on the transactions type of tab because that's where we would expect the raw data to be, which we can then assign categories to or adjust the categories that would be assigned with it. So we're gonna go down to the right-hand side. We should have the pane open now. And we're gonna then say, use money in Excel. So then it says money in Excel seamlessly and securely manage your finances to help you reach your financial goals. We're going to say, all right, let's sign in and do it. Now I've updated the workbook on the right hand side now signed in. We don't have any information because of course we have our, we have our uh, tab or our analysis on the right hand side accounts templates for you and so on but no data thus far. So our goal now to add an account. Notice too that if I go to the categories tab, I'm, I'm in this feature now. Now we have the categories, the automatic categories that are kind of populated on the category list in, in the categories tab on the left-hand side. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add. We're gonna go to the add feature. It says Microsoft uses played to link your bank account. So that's gonna be the source or the functionality of the other software that's going to be used. So secure encrypt helps protect your personal financial data. So it, then we're going to continue from here and then we're going to select our institution. Now there's many different institutions to choose from. We do have financial institutions, including your checking account. And it does look like we can basically pick up the uh, credit card type of account as well. And possibly accounts for other financial institutions that you might have like savings at as well. So we're looking for the financial data. We're kind of imagining here that we're going to be setting up then our, our bookkeeping so that we can make our financial statements basically at the end of the year or at least an income statement for our taxes possibly it's also interesting to note that you do have something here for paypal as well some of the some of the other type of softwares out there when you get the links aren't always as easy to get like a paypal type of account so it does look like we can connect and get the more detail for a paypal type of account that would be useful if you have online transactions for an online type of business and you use the PayPal type of uh, accounts for the cash transactions as well. We're going to pick just a normal checking account. Let's just go with uh, Wells Fargo here. Then you'd have to, of course, uh, link in. So enter your credentials then. Here we have it. The information has populated. We'll get into more detail on what we can do with this information in future presentations, but just a quick overview of it. We've got the institution and the accounts on the right hand side and then on the left hand side we currently have the transactions tab open that's where the transactions will come into play typically thinking about like your checking account type of transactions and possibly from a credit card type of account note that if your transactions don't populate right away it could take a little bit of time for them to come in they might come in a little bit later than the information on the right hand side if they don't populate after a minute or so then you might want to update up top and that could refresh the screen to pull in the transactions for you. Now, the major things that I would be thinking about to do with this, and we'll get into this once again in more detail later, is to take this transactions and sort it in such a way. Say, for example, it's the end of the year and I want to take my checking account and get all the information I need in order to prepare my tax return possibly and take this data from the checking account so I can then create, in essence, an income statement that I can then use to populate a Schedule C. So that's the primary thing I'm thinking of. And it did pull in enough information, like a lot of information. It went way for, further back than I actually expected it to in terms of transaction data. So we could use that data then to construct our, our income statement for an entire year, you know, back. So in other words, if I go to the date range up top and look at this filter, 
Uh, it actually went went back to 2021, 2020, and 2019, which is which is pretty far back. So even possibly if I needed two years of tax returns that I needed to do for a business and I didn't have that information and I wanted to, to dig that stuff up, this might be a tool to do that. And note, you can't generally go that far back in something like a, a oftentimes with the link or auto feed for like a QuickBooks or other software, which, which is accounting software. Although the accounting software, you can then download transactions from the institution itself and upload them into the accounting software and, and get the, the you know data from a further range back in that format as well. So we'll talk about how we can sort this in the future. Note also, it pulls in the balance information for your accounts as well, including a checking account or any kind of CD type of accounts that you have. Those are things that typically don't populate on something like a QuickBooks because or or some other accounting software that connects to the bank feeds because you know it's the double entry accounting system that kind of records the balance sheet side uh, of things so notice this one's a little bit it's a little bit kind of like disconnected within because it's going to show us where we stand according to the bank and then the transactions according to the date range that we have instead of like using the transactions to create the ending balances on the balance sheet so it's not like a full service uh, accounting process that you would have in a QuickBooks. We're not using the full service double entry accounting system, but it does give us, tells us what the bank has for us basically on the balance sheet side of things in a, in a little bit, uh, even like a more comprehensive way because it's able to pull in just the balances without having to use the double entry accounting system to kind of create those balances, right? And then it can create the the data just from a range of data. So this data, which would be kind of like the, the detail, kind of like the income statement is not being used to create the ending balance is on the balance sheet. It's just being used as a list of data that's coming from the financials that we can then use to create an income statement. And then it's giving us where we stand according to the bank in terms of the ending balances, even for things like a brokerage account and uh, and CD accounts, which again, aren't things that, that the balance doesn't often pull into the, to the QuickBooks information. The transaction detail will typically be used to then create those ending balances. So that's kind of nice because it does give you a nice snapshot on the balance sheet side of things at least from the financial type of institutions and then it gives you kind of the detail from the transactions so we'll take a little bit more look at that in the future but just note you can you could sort it by date over here and just note that they do give you a, a substantial amount of data uh, for the transactions they go back for a fair bit of time if you need to go back further than that i'm not sure if you can copy and paste like if you downloaded the data from your institution in, in a CSV file, like an Excel type file and tried to copy and paste it in here and, and let the template then use it. I'm not sure uh, if it would allow you to do that or not, but um, you know, you could try that if you need more data, but again, it goes back further than a year. So that's pretty nice. Then it's got the merchant uh, information. That's like the bank da data. I would imagine that's coming from like the memo information on, uh, on the bank data information, which they're assuming will be the merchant over here so they're trying to tr trying to convert you know the merchant like the vendor and the customer uh, from the bank data which will often be relevant if they have electronic transfers if you have checks and things like that then this will be harder to populate for the software and then they have the categories these are going to be like the accounts that we can assign and they're coming from the tab to the right so we'll talk more about customizing this this tab to the right and what we can do with that and then we got the subcategories, which again, we can add to the cell to the right. Then we've got the amount, we've got the accounts that it's coming from, and uh, the account over here in the institution. We could then, of course, sort by date, and we can also filter by date. So this is a kind of a pivot table setup. So for example, if I just want 2021, we could use all of 2020 if we want. That's nice. Uh, but I'm just going to look at 2021. If we just pick 2021, a little less data, and say, okay. Uh, there we have it. So now we can filter in that way. Uh, we can we can then sort by the by the uh, the merchant here if we want to sort and find a particular merchant. Uh, we could sort by the category, which is probably going to be one of our more common sorting methods in order to help us to categorize the information. We could sort by amount, which can help us to distinct uh, have a distinction between the income and and the expenses. Income being positive or the debits or the or the increases positive the decrease is negative and then we could sort or filter by the institution as well so if we have credit cards that are personal and business or something like that and a personal checking and a business checking or something like that we can then sort or filter 
by the account that we want to be working in as well. Those are kind of like pivot table options that you might be used to if you've used the pivot table. So we have that information. We then have the categories on the, on the right-hand side, and that's where we're going to have to do some work. We can add categories so that we can then populate this information in the middle. We have our snapshot information. This is giving us basically that, that breakdown current versus previous month information for, for uh, 2020. So if I hit the drop down here, we can then we can like look at that comparison the month's top spending and whatnot cumulative spending through the month and and so on which is nice we can see where our spending takes place and then uh that's basically that's basically what we have kind of by the default here and then what what we'll do is then think about how we can use this data also to basically create an income statement for it uh and we'll we'll continue on with that next time